Hi team, uh, Sean Hardy, physical performance coach, uh, back with another video update. Today we are looking at pace bowling workloads. Now, this is an important one to talk about at the moment because both of our programs at a 19s level are just about to move into or have just started pace bowling with loads and AMS. So we wanna talk about the framework that we use at New South Wales and what its key goals are and then kind of a little bit about how to use that to make sure that we have a really, really successful year as a quick in pathway. Now, before we get into the nuts and bolts of it, the 135 framework is set up with two key goals. The first is to prevent injury, and the second is to improve performance. And these two go hand in hand. Basically, this framework is set up to make sure you're as available for every pathway session you can attend to bowl and get better. And we believe that if you're available as possible, then you'll improve your performance under our coaching system. So in terms of what the actual numbers mean, it's a really simple system. It's effectively one, three, five, and that's one day in a row, three days in a week, five overs in a spell. If we focus on the one, we want to bowl no more than one day in a row. And that may, seem, that may seem silly, but really what it means is that we always want to have at least one day off in between bowling sessions. And that's because we know that our bone needs at least 24 hours to recover from an intense session or an intense workout. And we know that running through and bowling at the crease, you can get up to three to six times your body weight going through one leg, which then goes through your spine when you bowl a ball. Now we know that if you do that repeatedly, you give your bone a little bit of a stress, which is a good thing. We wanna then be able to recover from that so your bone repairs and grows and you're good to go the next time that you bowl. So we always wanna have at least one day in between our sessions. The three in our 135 rule is three days in a week. As a pathway athlete, we would expect you to bowl between one and three times a week. And the goal is basically to have a maximum of three days in the week one, so we can make sure we always have at least a day off in between our bowls, but two, so if you look at this graph, your bowling loads kind of go like this in the week. And that would be no bowling on a Monday, bowl on a Tuesday, day off on a Wednesday, bowl on a Thursday, day off Friday, and then a bowl at the weekend. And that ticks a couple of goals for us because it spaces our week out, and it also makes sure that we've got enough rest in there. So no more than three days in the week. A quick note on this one is that sometimes you're gonna get more than three bowls in in the week, and that's okay, but then we wanna look at a two week period and make sure that the next week that we bowl, we apply the rule for two weeks. So if I had the example where, as a pathway player, I had a school carnival where I ended up bowling four days in one week, the next week, to make sure that I, over two weeks, didn't bowl more than six times, I'd make sure that I only bowled twice. The last number in our one through five rule is the five. And this one is just more of a inside your session, how you treat a bigger load once you start building up into your carnival loads. And that means five overs in a spell. And basically what we want is, we can bowl up to 30 balls at a really good intensity and get good practice out of it without fatiguing too much in our action. Beyond 30 balls, at a pathway level, we want you to try and at least take a 10 to 15 minute drinks break, just like if you're in a game, or if you've got a really big load, say 48 balls, then do it as two spells in the session with a break in the middle. So at a senior level, if a bowler, pace bowler like Stella Campbell had a load of 48, then in three net session rotations, she would bowl on the first and the third to make sure she got a break in the middle. The reason that we do that, and if you look at the second graph here around your effort and what your bowling looks like over time, the red line is basically if we have a big load above 30 balls and we just bowl it continuously. And if we get into the zone here after 30 balls, we see that our effort's dropping off, but also our action is fatiguing and we're getting a much worse result in terms of how we bowl. The green line, contrastingly, is where we have that break. And so we get the, the relative dip at the 30 mark, then we have a rest, and then we come back up and we finish the session with good intensity and we're in a much cleaner action. That's just a brief explanation on our workloads. Um, it's exactly how we're gonna work off uh, programming in AMS and exactly how we're gonna design both pathway bowling programs. We're gonna use the one, three, five pace workloads rule.